Hello everyone out there, Night Guy back at you. Got another workout for the uh, Night Guy training series. You're probably wondering about my little setup here. Well, we're gonna get to that in a second. Um, today's workout is gonna be um, pull and uh, carry, Night Guy training pull and carry workout, um, specifically to increase your strength in pulling and your strength in carrying. Um, a knight should be ready to pull, you know, maybe have to climb up on a horse or climb a ladder as you're going to uh, siege uh, some walls and you know breach castle, um, as well as carry around, oh well, everything, everybody carries stuff, um, as well as their armor and equipment and weaponry, of course. Um, I can't tell you enough how swinging these swords and axes, uh, you know, definitely wears on your on your arms uh, and the grip as well. Um, so this workout is going to be uh, a great grip builder and a great uh, lifting, carrying, and uh, pulling. Um, we're going to keep it more uh, related to your bicep and uh, lat muscles, so the bicep and back, um, mainly inward uh, pulling motion to really, you know, get your, your core involved on the pole. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to simulate with uh, the entire uh, set of different sets of uh, workouts that I do. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. We're uh, also, uh, the theme of this is going to be uh, from the Iron Age. I got my uh, iron bar right here. Great for training. Um, I mean, I guess you could try to use this as a some form of staff or quarter staff or pole weapon. Anyways, today we're going to use that for inverted chin-ups. And we'll get back to that in a second. I have my 10-pound iron dumbbell. Um, kind of cheating here. I uh, don't really have a set. I have another dumbbell, um, rubber, rubber, uh, outside there. Anyhow, um, we'll just call it an iron dumbbell for now. Either way, um, let's, uh, get into the workout. Um, first we're going to start with the back. Um, I picked a few workouts that are relatively simple to do, uh, with limited space, uh, not to mention limited space, uh, limited equipment sometimes. Um, and I wanted to demonstrate, uh, the challenge of a workout not necessarily needing a lot of equipment or really heavy weights. I'm only going to use these 10 pound dumbbells and I'm going to show you how you can, you know, get a workout that'll, that'll tell you apart just using those and uh, this iron bar set up on these chairs. Uh, you know, you could probably find chairs or tables or, you know, um, somewhere where you could set up a bridge uh, situation uh, set up. Um, you don't need an iron bar. You could probably use a wood bar or, you know, maybe even strong enough PVC if you could find something. Um, Anyways, the concept is very basically the same. It's kind of like a pull-up bar, but lower to the ground, uh, kind of like a cheated or assisted pull-up, essentially. Uh, but we'll demonstrate in, this, in, in a second. Let's go ahead and get right into the workout. I'm going to start uh, right off of the floor. Um, just to demonstrate, uh, me personally, I normally do this specific workout off of a stability ball. You uh, get one of those. You could get them you know, any sporting goods store. Uh, Walmart sells them. Um, they're not too expensive. You just inflate them and um, you kind of use them in place of a weight bench uh, for a lot of the workouts. Um, they're really good. They involve a lot of stability and core workouts, uh, core activation uh, in the workout. Um, but I'm trying to keep it low equipment. I'm going to, you know, just show how easy it is to do this with minimal equipment. Plus, we want to keep the challenge level low. I'm going to start showing these workouts, you know, just for beginners. Um, so this would be the beginner version of the workout. You would lay down on the floor with your dumbbell. And then once you're comfortably on the floor, you stretch your arm straight up in front of you. Um, in my previous workout, if you followed my lean machine stability workout, um, I mentioned keeping your shoulder girdle locked down. You don't want to do any sort of shrugging uh, motions on pretty much any sort of workout except shrugs. Um, you could really hurt your neck and we're not going to do that. So. Keep those shoulders locked down, straight out in front of you. You're just gonna kind of bring the weight back, let it fall back, uh, control the motion, nice and slow, no rush. Uh, kind of go down to your fingertips about touch the floor, and then you bring it right back over. Um, stopping almost directly in front of you. You don't wanna go all the way down to here because the weight really isn't on the muscles you know needed, needed anymore the muscles that you're supposed to be challenging. So I would stop right about here at the finish. So um, let's drop it down again. And then from down here, once our toes, our, our, our thumbs have touched the floor there, we come back up. And there you go, that's a pullover. 
um, for a real added challenge to this workout, not only could you try using uh, the stability ball like I mentioned, or you know, you could do it off of a bench, but I mean, the stability ball is the best way to go, and it, it involves a lot more uh, core in the workout when you when your feet are, you know, on the ground stabilizing the ball and stabilizing your weight on the ball while you're uh, performing this workout. Um, another good uh, challenge for the workout is actually take this weight here and squeeze inward. See, I'm not even going to use my fingers to hold it anymore. I'm just squeezing in with my hands. Um, that gives really, really good uh, chest activation, pec, pec activation more specifically. Um, in the motion, your lats are still driving the main force, but it forces your uh, pecs, to, pecs to activate a little bit better. And that's about it. Um, I try not to kill myself worrying about perfect numbers of sets. All right, let's bring it back up. Um, not sets, uh, reps, I should say. Uh, for this workout, we're definitely doing three sets of each. Um, for rep range, here's my rule of thumb. Quality. Um, if the weight is too challenging and you, you, you're, you're struggling to even get five quality controlled reps, you saw how it was going nice and slow, uh, that sort of motion on all the lifts. Especially for starters, you can do explosive work. But when you're still in the beginning, if you don't train regularly, maybe you, you aren't a beginner, maybe you, you have lifted weights before, but you don't follow your routine consistently week in and week out, definitely start with the slow and controlled stuff. Not only for safety, but to really make sure you're building that foundation back up before you move on to heavier weights. Anyhow, back to the subject of heavier weights. Um, if you're struggling to even get... Um, you know, five reps, five quality reps at that kind of a speed, you're probably going too heavy. Go ahead and lower it down and challenge yourself a little more. Um, speaking of that, I'm going to demonstrate now doing a challenging curl workout um, with just using these 10 pound dumbbells. Um, I was mentioning, you know, you want to keep, we're going to keep everything inward for these lifts. So what I'm going to do is twisting curls. You stand straight up. Um, I think any workout that gets you standing is, is, is a really good benefit for, you know, the body overall supporting the weight, supporting your spine, your, your, your own weight as gravity pulls you down, as well as whatever weights you're holding. Um, you know, very good to build up the stability of the body, the strength and balance that you need. Uh, Knight definitely would need that, any, any, any warrior really. Um, so anyways, let's go into the curls now. We're going to start in a hammer curl formation, but once you break halfway... You're going to turn it up, and then you're going to come back down around halfway again and drop it down, all right? I'm going to show you that at the side now. Let's do it this way so I don't hit the bar, of course. You're going to come up hammer style right about halfway. We're going to turn and finish it off. For this workout, I want you to actually uh, flex the wrist as well. If you notice, as I'm coming up, my wrists are actually turning up and inwards. We're going to take advantage of this curl and use it to be able to build up some uh, really good grip strength. All right. See that? And that's our curls. I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch now. Um, normally, I would recommend doing more reps than I've just performed on this workout. Um, I'm only going to stop here just so I can show you another challenging method of the same, uh, you know, curling technique. And what you're going to do with this one is a static hold. And with the other arm, we're going to do um, pause curls, which you're going to curl up halfway, then come back down halfway, then go all the way up, and then come down halfway, come back up, then all the way down, then come back up halfway, then back down, then all the way up back down halfway and come back up. My arms are already fatiguing out, especially with doing those other curls. Then once your one arm fatigues, you switch to the other. Now my right arm is gonna hold this weight in a static position. See, I'm static here, 90 degree bend on my elbows. I'm gonna stay in that static position. You wouldn't stay in the static position this long in between sets. This is just for demonstration. And then you're gonna finish up on the other arm. 
Static holds um, are great to add into workouts, uh, just like we just did now, right in between a lift. They can really increase the demand on the uh, muscles as they're already, you know, starting to fatigue and want to give out. You throw a new uh, dynamic in there and challenge them even further. All right. And that's it for the core workout. I'm going to set these down over here, out of the way. All right. You would uh, normally then go ahead and take, uh, you know, I want to say a good two minutes. That would be your warm-up set. You do three sets of each of those two workouts I, I, I showed, the, the, the floor or ball, if you're up for the challenge. I would recommend ball, but if you don't have it, go for the floor. The floor lat pullovers, the uh, twisting bicep curls. If you're up for the challenge, throwing that last dynamic, try to maybe do one or two sets of the three sets um, as the static hold, you know, pause halfway curls. Um, you'll do three sets of each of those. If you really want to challenge yourself and how I would normally do it, you know, when I'm not in a situation like this doing a, a demonstration, how I would normally do it is I'd probably superset it. I do the lats, the lat pullovers right into the curls. Keep your heart rate going, get that metabolism going real good, start building up that lactic acid real, real nice, break down those muscles, get your body producing those uh, growth hormones, get the muscles nice and big real fast. I'm always about uh, more bang for the buck when working out. Um, you know, condensing it short and sweet is the way to go. It's, you know, it's okay to be short, but it's got to be sweet. Uh, just like I mentioned before, try not to stress yourself too much about rep range. You know, um, just make sure it's quality. It doesn't need to be 10 all the time. It doesn't need to be 12 all the time. Sometimes a good quality 7 will beat out a 10 any day, as long as it was quality. The muscles, the muscles don't care how many times you lift something. What they care about is the maximal exertion. And that's what we're trying to get. Anyways, we're going to go on to the next workout. Very good workout to get maximal exertion. This is my inverted pull-up rig. I mentioned, uh, mentioned it earlier. We have uh, two chairs. You lay a bar across, creating a, a bridge. And then you just simply get under it. All right, we're going to try to keep the, uh, like I said, we're going to keep the motion inward. I want to really focus on the biceps and the back. Whenever you're doing pull-ups, um, Pull-ups are, you know, standard. You're going to be elbows out, palms forward uh, to really bring in the motion, you know, for the strength you're trying to build up in this position, pulling inward towards yourself. You're going to turn your arms in and palms facing you. It's also going to do good to get you a good stretch on the lat as you come down. Uh, when you go that full range of motion, make sure to always go the full range of motion on all these lifts. I'm going to demonstrate to you right now. If you're cheating your pull-ups, you're not going to get what you need to out of them. Um, in this case, chin-ups. If you're cheating your chin-ups, you're not getting anywhere. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, position the width of uh, on, on a pull-up or a chin-up. Um, kind of varies. Kind of depends what you're comfortable with. Me, personally, I like shoulder length. I'm going to say, you know, uh, shoulder length is a good standard to start at. Another key thing to keep in mind, whenever your arm is above this bar, whenever you're doing a pull-up or a chin-up, um, any sort of bar, um, what you want to make sure these knuckles are sitting at the top. Not like this. I don't want to be, I don't want to be trying to pull myself up when my hands in a position like this. Right up here. Reason being, our wrists, the muscles in our fingers, you know, your actual grip strength is not strong enough. It's not meant to hold, you know, your own body weight in that position. And you can hurt yourself. We're not going to do that. Knuckles up and over, shoulder width apart, plant your feet. Nice and firm as you come up. All right, stabilize yourself nice and easy. And then we're going to go down, full extension, full lockout, and back up. Get that chin nice and high above that bar, and back down, and back up. Chin nice and high above the bar, and back down, and back up. Notice as I'm coming up, I'm not stretching my neck to get the chin above the bar. I'm pulling myself above the bar. That's the idea. That's what we want to do. Keeping that core nice and tight. Keeping those muscles engaged. All right. Ooh. That was quite a challenge. Uh, that's about the most I got, especially after doing those... Uh, you know, uh, 
pullovers and the curls that we just did. Definitely feeling the fatigue on that one. Now, um, for your workout, take a minute and hit it again. Try to get three sets out of this if you can. If not, just go for two. And uh, with a workout like that, depending on your level, if you're a beginner, if pulling, you know, the your body's ability to pull isn't that developed yet, call it a day after the chin-ups. Do your, your, your pullovers, do your curls, and call it a day after the chin-ups. But if you got some more in you and you can handle the challenge, I want you to try this next workout. <clears throat> this is going to be a, um, a pull-up. But um, almost like a cheat one arm pull up, uh, one arm chin up. Sorry, I personally don't have enough body strength to get uh, one handed chin ups yet, even inverted. I'm trying. I'm gonna get there. But um, I'm still working on it. So one that I like to do, you use a cross grip. You're gonna grab your own wrist, grab the bar, and now, like I said, if you're up for the challenge, this isn't for everyone. This is just another way to intensify the workout. I'll demonstrate in a second. You grab your wrist. And you're going to bring it in. You're going to use your pulling motion to pull you in. All right. Let's, uh, let's show how it's done. Hi, Samuel. Are you going to help me out in my workout? All right. Let's get it. Always full lockout. I can really feel the one arm. All right. I got about three on that one. Let's see what happens when I switch to my left. My left isn't as strong as my right. But it's up for the challenge either way. <clears throat> All right. All right. That's about it for me on that one. I got a two on the left, three on the right. I really love workouts like that where you alternate limbs, being your arms and your legs. Get to really show you where your balances are. But anyways, um, keep in mind, you're not going to do the workout exactly like I did just now. Um, <clears throat> my rest time is a little all over the place. I kind of just, you know, breeze through it just to demonstrate to you. But remember, the lat pulled out, pullovers, the bicep curls, three sets of each. Inverted chin up. Same thing, three sets. Um, if you're up for the challenge. Cross grip, chin ups. Try two to three sets on that one as well. If you can handle the challenge, and after that, I'd say you should be pretty done. Um, you don't want to overdo it, you know, in your workouts. Um, last tip I could really give: uh, just you know, um, do what you can uh, for the rep range. Like I said, if you're doing a lift and you see maybe you're struggling to even get five. Maybe time to lighten up the weight. Uh, for example, like the cross grip. You're just doing it just now. I could barely get five on it. That's all right. I saved it as my last workout, so I'm not too upset. Um, what I would, you know, what I'm probably going to try next time is come around and it's time to do pull again. I may do a light warm up and start with that workout instead of saving it, you know, as a, you know, a burnout for the end. You know, maybe I'll start with that workout when I'm nice and fresh. See what I got, what I can handle. Right now, I'm not doing too good on that one, but um, I will say that's the most intense workout in this routine. So, uh, you know, you guys uh, let me know how, how it goes. Uh, let me know what you think. Give it a shot, all right? And uh, always keep training. Um, we'll uh, see you next time. Thank you.